Hi everyone. I'm Ryan, Lucas's younger brother. I'm relieved knowing that Molly, who we've all gotten to know so well, is now a part of our family. Where do I begin? Naturally, I thought to begin this speech where it all started. That cold winter night, I remember meeting Molly for the first time. It was awkward. So awkward. <laughs> we all just sat in the living room watching a movie, but we probably missed the first half because my mother felt the need to fire her down with questions. <laughs> Imagine that. When she was done, as the youngest sibling in the family, I knew my responsibilities. I did not hold back on my confrontation on why she was here. <laughs> With Lucas, of all people. Nothing terrible, so I thought. Just your typical questions, curious as to what possessed her to be here with him. I thought maybe she'd been blinded by his snow-white, pasty legs at a cross-country meet <laughs> the fall before. And it may have been different for, with me, being I lived with him, but I thought the scent of Lucas's cow manure and grain dust would steer her clear. Apparently, the nagging got to be a bit much at some point because my lovely father, from the other side of the room, texted me, be nice. <laughs> I was bamboozled. He must have forgot what team he was on. I still firmly believe Lucas sat there in silence because he, too, was curious on how he'd gotten her there. <laughs> Fortunately, in the end, I did not scare her off. It wasn't long before... It became clear Lucas had got a good pick when Molly fell right. I'm not crying. <laughs> Into place as a part of our family. I'm not crying. <laughs> I just need a second. <laughs> I got a lot more. <laughs> um, whether it be cross country, track, or out for supper, family gatherings, affair, she was there with Lucas, a part of our family. We got to know her quickly and didn't have to ask on where to go out to eat because we knew wherever we eat, she'd eat an eighth of a portion and declare herself full. <laughs> and Lucas would eat the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Our dog wouldn't bark when she walked through the front door without knocking. <laughs> and she would find me standing in the underwear in the kitchen, drinking a glass of apple juice. <laughs> and we wouldn't shy away from asking her for a favor or 10 million around fair time. One of the most obvious realis realizations that she was here to stay was just a few months ago when Lucas brought her home on a hot August day. She helped unload racks of small square bales. She thought she was going to make ice cream at the threshing bee. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> I would do just about anything to get out of that job, but there was Molly to help. My dad says that says more about me than her. I'm not sure what he means by that. <laughs> Whether she liked it or not, I cannot confirm. I do remember on the last rack she was tired and asked if she had to help anymore. I told her if she could just help me get the top ones down from the first row, I could do the rest. But she knew better and ended up helping with the whole rack. Of course, Molly, like usual, had a bit of a different approach and made the most of it, chatting the whole time. You know, the more I think on it, it does make sense that her and Lucas get along so well. I just wonder who gets to speak first after they see each other for the first time after a long day. Anyways, I couldn't hear a single word she was saying, so I just nodded and smiled when it felt like the right time. My favorite thing about having her around is it makes Lucas maybe a little bit more tolerable. No matter where we are or what we're doing, if Lucas asks me to do something, she wants to know why he can't get up and do it himself. I'm not sure he enjoys that trait as much as I do because he's already doing 20 other things most of the time, but thanks anyways, Molly. Now the biggest downfall of Lucas getting married to Molly is the standard he has set for Seth and I. It's much worse for me because I don't get to scope out every person within a 20 mile radius while delivering the mail.
I remember the night Lucas, without warning, pulled out the ring at the supper table. Even after months of making him nervous every time we'd be poking at him about it, I still just about choked on my hamburger. <laughs> what shocks me the most is how fast he's gotten old. Whenever Lucas's name comes up with my friends, I always had to explain that no, he is not 40, and no, he does not have three kids. It seems like just yesterday he'd get mad over some little thing that doesn't matter, and his voice would get all high and squeaky. Oh wait, this still happens, never mind. It seems like just a couple of years ago we'd be sledding on a day like today, arguing as brothers, arguing as brothers do on who gets a good sled, and who'd get the one that just sank in it when you sat in it. But at that time, any sled sat, Seth sat in would sink. <laughs> or we'd be at the farm washing cows for the fair. While Lucas would be washing, I'd be playing with the sponge, pretending I was doing something. Or my favorite on Easter morning, when we would always, I would always get a head start on looking for the hidden eggs in the house, because I wasn't as tall or fast as my brothers. I'd always hide some in another place rather than my bucket so they wouldn't realize at the end I'd gotten twice as many as them. <laughs> With all that said, it came as a relief to see the ring because I truly cannot imagine it being other, any other way than Molly sticking around forever. Being my older brother, Lucas taught me a lot of things even when I didn't want to hear it. He taught me how to do things the right way, but he got plenty of things wrong too. So I'm glad he found Molly to help navigate their life together. <laughs> That's all. <laughs>